How about that, folks? There's a fish for you. That's is that typical size, Paul, for the river? Well, that's one of the bigger ones. That's one of the bigger ones. In the late fall of 2021, we lost a dear friend. Legendary fisherman Dan Gapen Sr. passed away at the age of 89, leaving behind a rich legacy, both in the world of fishing and here at Midwest Outdoors. Dan Gapen. Dan Gapen. Dan Gapen here with Bob or Ann. We're on mid Minisca Lodge, right on the Albany River, and we're going walleye fishing. And who's going to catch the first fish? You are. Oh, Gapen gained his first exposure to the business of fishing by tying lures for his father's tackle store. This humble start blossomed into a career as a guide, tackle developer, author, TV host, and most importantly, a teacher for generations of fishermen. With the river coming in here this evening, that'll be really good. But right now it's about almost high noon and those fish have backed off in the hole to the back end of the hole. And that's where they'll be sitting. That's where we'll catch most of them. But this is an awfully good spot in anywhere in June, if you're up in, in any of these Ontario waters or Manitoba or wherever you are in Canada, this is an excellent spot to catch walleyes. And you catch a lot of nice fish too. I think it's like any river structure, even though this runs into the lake, you fish it kind of like a river structure and, and the fish will back off to the, the lift in the, the bottom of the, the pool and uh, that's where they seem to hang out. And they'd be up in that fast water chasing minnows, but right now they're in the back end of the hole where the, the river goes back down here into the lake part. That's a nice walleye, Ann. That's kind of fat. Yeah. That's, that one has spawned yet? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, he's all spawned out. Yeah, they're all spawned out. Those are nice walleyes. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know, that. anytime you can catch two and a half, three and a half pound walleyes in almost every cast, that's not all bad. Gapen was a major part of Midwest Outdoors television since the beginning. Along with friend and protege Bob Aran, he took us on adventures across the Midwest and Canada, sharing his fishing skills and the joys of the outdoors. They're pretty strong. You've got to be, and you, you squeeze them in behind the gills. And I found that if you take them under the, <laughs> oh, no. really come struggling. on, come on, whoa, whoa, stop now. Nah. There you go. Look at that little little wolf fly is caught right here in the corner of her mouth. Oh, yeah. See that? Yeah. Oh, isn't she pretty? Look at her. Oh, look at her tail. She yeah. like she got bit on by something, I think huh? Probably an otter got her or something. Well, I, otter eat fish? Oh, oh yeah, sure they otter. do. Yeah. That's right. Oh, oh, oh. Uh oh, we're gonna need the net again. Not as pr colorful as the males. You mean the males are prettier than that? Why, well, certainly. Males in all the species. Uh, and our guide, oh, guides guides are both shaking their heads. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the, gir the girls are always the ugliest looking, oh, right? Don't give me that. Yeah, the boys are always <laughs> the prettiest. <laughs> well, you just go ahead and think so. All right, well, we're going to try another one right over there. Always at the forefront of discovery and innovation, Dan Gapen loved to share his experience and knowledge to help us catch more fish. We discovered this new structure about five and a half years ago. It was actually it was midsummer, five years ago. Okay. Yeah, and uh, we were we were trolling the river, the the edge of the river, where the walleyes normally are, and uh, we're using the spin bee. That we were, actually we were testing our new spin bee. It was one of the first times we took it out to try it out, and uh, we were chasing walleyes where we'd always caught them. But it was about the first no, week in really? August, and the walleyes had disappeared. Now, where do, where are the walleyes? They're not where they normally are in the spring and the fall. They've, they've gone somewhere else. They certainly didn't disappear from the river. So we decided, we, Annie had the underwater gear down, and we were filming and catching lots of smallmouth bass, mostly small ones. And we decided to go across the river, and rather than pull all of that underwater gear up, we decided just to leave it down and slowly go across the river. What they discovered on the underwater camera would lead them on a quest to understand what appeared to be a significant zone almost devoid of current, well away from shore. They saw a big fish holding almost effortlessly near bottom, where the current should have been flowing at similar speed to the surface water. It that seemed unusual, yeah, because you think of, of current being um, the same always from top to bottom. It just seemed odd that when you got down that low to the, close to the bottom that it stopped or it fluttered rather than spun, you know, like it would normally, it just kind of fluttered or flopped. 
And so that would indicate that there's a, um, a lessening of the current when you get, you know, reach that, that depth. That was the beginning of what we call the zone. Annie and I call it a zone. It's, it's a new structure in rivers, and all rivers have them. We, since that time, we've fished all over North America, and there isn't a river that doesn't have this same structure. And what we learned is that these structures appear as the water temperature gets warmer. We've discovered that, like in July and August, they appear and they're bigger. Once the water temperature gets above 60 degrees, Quit fishing the shoreline. If you want to catch fish that long, that's a good place to catch them. This has been Dan Gapen for Midwest Outdoors. I hope you try one of those spots that you've never tried before, one that's hard to get into. And remember that we at Midwest Outdoors suggested it.